forms, perception and composition. Horizontal forms Horizontal forms give us a sense of stability, stability, calmness. We associate them with the floor, the step, the sea. When we assume a horizontal position, we feel the most stability, since in this position it is impossible to fall. We also perceive horizontal forms as safe, since they, these forms, cannot fall on us. The small horizontal shapes in the painting may be associated with an island of tranquility. Vertical forms The vertical shapes are more active as they fight the Earth's gravity. They radiate energy and strive upwards, towards heaven. Take for example trees and skyscrapers. Their shape required a lot of energy to turn into a vertical one. And they can release a lot of energy if they fall. If you place a horizontal block on vertical lines, you will feel stable again. Vertical lines in this case give a sense of royalty, order and pride. Diagonal shapes Diagonal shapes are dynamic as they represent movement and pressure. In life, we see diagonal lines in the form of falling poles or trees. They can also be falling roof beams supporting the structure of the building beyond the canvas, or part of growing branches, heading towards the sun but also sagging under gravity. Often diagonal lines lead us to the focus of the composition, highlighting the main thing in the picture. Mountains, waves, children's slides are also diagonals that are in motion or under pressure. When we imagine an object on such a diagonal, we know for sure that it must move. Even our eyes cannot resist this, we view the diagonal path from top to bottom or from bottom to top. Here the triangle is located on the base, on a horizontal surface, therefore it is perceived as stable. If we turn it and rest on one axis, we will feel that it should fall back on the base and again assume a horizontal position. In another case, such a triangle on a blank canvas is perceived as a cannon which will now shoot at the right corner of the canvas. Position of the form on the canvas, top or bottom. The upper half of the canvas is a place of freedom, happiness and triumph. Forms located at the top of the canvas are perceived as more spiritual and sublime. When we are at the top, we are in a stronger tactical position, we can see our enemies and fire at them from top to bottom. Below, we will not be able to see so much. In addition, objects can fall and crush us. Being at the top we feel lighter, freer and more joyful. If we want to show the sublimity of the subject, we place it high in the picture. And all thanks to the force of gravity, objects that are high give us the feeling that they are floating or flying, or in some other way oppose the force of gravity. The bottom of the canvas feels more insecure, heavier, sadder, or more limited. On the other hand, we perceive the top of the canvas as the sky, and the bottom as the earth. Objects at the bottom of the canvas are perceived as more mundane, more grounded and less mobile. Objects placed higher on the canvas have more pictorial weight. Such objects are perceived as more important. If we want to give an object more importance, we place it high. Canvas Center the center of the canvas is the center of attention, it is the point of highest attraction. It can be a gem that radiates light, or a warrior heroine radiating triumph, or a figure surrounded by enemies. Our emotional response depends on the context, but the fact remains that we find it difficult to take our eyes off the center and survey the radius of the composition. The eyes seem to be nailed to the center, trapped. What happens if you move an object from the center? The composition will become more dynamic. The figures seem to move diagonally to the lower right corner, passing through the center of the canvas. Now our eyes are free to walk along the path of the figure, back and forth, plus we can examine the area around the figure. The center of the composition can be used as the center of attention, where the most intense events take place and the radius can be used as a zone of calm and incompleteness, or as a zone where two equivalent elements are connected. 
corners and edges of the canvas. The closer the subject is to the edges or corners of the canvas, the higher the tension felt. Typically, artists place the figure in the center of the canvas for meditative purposes. For example, icons of various religions, usually a religious leader is placed in the center of the composition so that a person can more easily focus his mind on him. White or Black Background The white background is perceived as more reliable and safe, as it is associated with the day when everything is clearly visible. But there may be an exception, if we run away from the killer under the cover of night, as we feel more likely to hide in the dark. Since we can't see well in the dark, black is usually associated with the unknown, and all our fears are associated with it while white is the color of hope and light. But at the same time, black and white are non-colors, and shades, and represent death. In Europe, when a person is buried, they wear black, in India and Korea, white. Red is associated with blood and fire. What else in nature is black and white? Black night, white bones, black coal, clouds, white pearls, white snow. All this is lifeless. You should also pay attention to how red and white glow against black. If they are placed on a white background, they will no longer be so saturated. Sharp and rounded shapes. Our skin is thin. Sharp objects can go through it and even kill us. Therefore, sharp forms are perceived as terrible and threatening. Most weapons are sharp. Knives, arrows, Spears, rocks, scissors, wasp sting, mosquito proboscis, saw blade. We feel more anxiety when we look at sharp shapes. Rounded shapes are perceived as more reliable, comfortable, and safe. What do we associate with rounded shapes? Hills, waves, boulders, rounded female body shapes. Form size. We feel more physically safe when we are big than when we are small, because then we have more power to defend ourselves against enemies. One of the best ways to defeat a protagonist, or threat, is to get strong or very big. The same figure of a small size seems very vulnerable. If we want to escalate the situation, the threatening object must be increased in size, and the victim, on the contrary, must be reduced. Rhythm and non-rhythm. Order and chaos. This is the hardest part. Our eyes automatically look everywhere for rhythm, orderliness, in order to capture the essence of what is happening. Sometimes rhythm gives us a sense of security and stability. Because we know what comes next. Our life is also subject to order, as we plan our future. Most of all, we are confused by the confusion and uncertainty in life. Then we call ourselves disoriented. But the ideal order sometimes also causes fear because of its monotony. We associate it with a cold, unemotional, mechanical mind, unusual for a person. Such order does not exist in nature. The other extreme, as the Japanese writer Akitagawa said, the most terrible hell for me is an endless forest of flowering cherry trees. Life requires harmony. Contrasts. We notice contrast, or contrast allows us to see. The contrast can be between colors, shapes, locations. Human perception is based on contrasts. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube, Instagram channel and Facebook community, where I share my experience, free brushes, useful tips. Links in the description of the video. Let's grow together. Watch my other videos to grow your skill.